of the 2023 Pokemon uh, Bottom Regional Championships, and what a time to be here for the stream. I myself am Costa, joined by the ever so lovely Mr. David Partington, and we do have the grand finals of the regional, Marcus Statter versus Alex Soto. And what a two finalists they are as well, with two really kind of cool teams as well that really come out from this tournament. Yep. And we've seen them a couple of times as well over the stream from day one and day two, uh, piloting their teams against each other as well as the rest of the competition. Uh, I think it's uh, no small feat to say, uh, of course, that both of these trainers have a lot of experience that they're going to be going and bringing to the table into this finals, as well as some very, very interesting teams. Uh, I, I think we do know and got confirmation that Marcus did actually go up against Alex uh, previously, where Marcus was actually the victor 2 and O. Oh. And I think there was a bit of a highlight play where there was some interaction between the Gothitelle and the trick from the Golden Go being able to trap that female in Didi into reutilizing the trick room, hence kind of getting it stuck into a sort of vortex per se. Yeah, and those are two Pokemon that Marcus has been using to great success as well that is not commonly seen on a lot of the teams that we've been seeing at the moment. Normally we've got the Iron Bundle, mm. we've got the Fluttermane, Arcanine, Iron Hands and Moongus stuff going on at the moment. Yeah. But yeah, Gothitelle really changes things up or if anything, it means the opponent can't change things up yeah. much with its shadow tag. So um, we've seen him pilot that so well, not with any sort of Perishong adaptations, but mm -hmm. still very effectively to be able to just pivot in something next to that Gothitelle to be able to dispatch of what he chooses. Exactly, and I think it's that sort of situation where being able to control the tempo of the match is honestly one of the most important things that you can do. We've seen it, for example, with Wolf being able to accomplish that by winning Orlando Regionals. But let's Let's go and actually see the bracket, the sort of story of this top eight, which has, of course, led us to the finals. Here we go. Our top eight here at the Bokken Regional Championships. They've come so far, fought so hard, and we can see the little progression lines of, of our finalists here too. Aurelion Sula with the Dragonite and Mousehold, stuff that they've been very well versed in using. Marco Silva with the Garganacle, unfortunately, has not made it through this time. Mm. Um, Michael Kelsch as well, he's been really well on the ladder recently and running that Talonflame, bringing a lot of speed control to him. Exactly, and we've got, of course, three German nationals at a German regional. That's really, really good turnout for the home turf. Uh, we've got two Spanish representatives, two Italian representatives, of course, the uh, Aurelion being able to be from uh, French representation. And uh, looking at the various teams, I think we have spoken multiple times, no doubt about that, about Alex's uh, team, where, of course, there is no Paradox Pokemon to be seen, but it seems like he doesn't really need it to be able to reach not only one, but two regional championship finals. Yeah, it's super incredible. He's obviously looked at kind of the bracket and looked at the Paradox Pokemon that are coming to Series 2, mm -hmm. or maybe, I don't know, maybe he was just asleep for the last few weeks <laughs> or so and just turned up and still was just like, oh, I don't know what these Pokemon are, but they yeah. all die to eruption. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that's the thing. Uh, being able to have eruption and bring that uh, Tortol into position. We've got hard Trick Room set up. You've got multiple Trick Room users, which is so, so good. And then just go for the terrestrialization of fire type, eruption, combination with helping hand from female and Diddy. There are so many options that sort of uh, motivate for absolute huge damage output being dealt onto both of the Pokemon on the side of the field. Uh, previously, we had seen there are a couple of Pokemon that try to resist it as much as they can uh, with the terrestrialization of the fire type themselves. I think we or King Gambit earlier on in the stream, but you're not able to do much because it just starts forgetting that there are any sort of resists because of all of the compounding multipliers available. Here are our two finalists. They are sat and ready. They are probably feeling so exhausted from all of that day one that went on for all those nine rounds, another five rounds today, and finally they're here through the top eight and the top four, and now the finals versus each other. I wonder what's going through the head at the moment, Costa, because they have faced each other already in the Swiss rounds, and Marcus, as we know, as you said, Costa, already took that win from him, mm. expertly piloting the Gothitelle, which is something that really throws a 
spanner in the works for a trick room where you want to obviously set your trick room. Yep. And Didi often is there to help out, but you then you want to make the most of it, right? Bring in the Torkoal or something to be able to deal the damage that it needs to be. But Gothdor obviously will, is going to stop that. So uh, it's probably going to be on Alex's end now, coming off the back foot of their previous set as mm. to how he's going to adapt to be able to deal with this. And maybe something that we could see used is that like Annihilate, which is obviously ghost type, can yeah. switch out of those shadow tag trappingness mm -hmm. and you turn out if it so needs to as well yeah i think that's a really good shout because in the end of the day being able to have that flexibility available to yourself and even potentially go for final gambit is a really really cool way to be able to sort of uh, bring the control versus uh, marcus's team we've mentioned uh, gothitelle is there it does have access to trick room it can try to um reverse trick room or at least negate it during the same turn if of course uh, there is a trick room user on the field over on alex's side we've seen this at least from the Liverpool Regionals, calling back to it, uh, Alex has brought a team which demands attention from uh, his opponents. So being able to already play into that, see what your opponent has to sort of counteract that very hard trick room core strategy, really takes you a long way because you can already start pathing out a vision of what your uh, opponent will likely try to do. Do you try to negate the trick room? Do you try to lean in to the trick room and actually bring your own sort of switches or viable Pokemon that can survive the um, sort of uh, ongoing uh, pressure under the trick room presence? You know, for example, with the Tortoise Sweeper. That's a great question, Costa, because we... and. To be honest, it's probably why we're here and they're there. And we can't fully answer those questions because these yeah. are the two finalists of <laughs> Bokken Regionals. And um, it's probably going so much through their head as to what they're going to bring. Now, thinking about um, how the hard trick room has kind of fared in Series 1, where there was probably a lot more common to have that imprisoned trick room kind of option on your team, maybe in a Frigerath, for instance. Mm. It's just, you just, just don't see it here. Um, but as you can see, Marcus has a lot of cool options on his team mm -hmm. that aren't traditionally used to um, stop kind of a hard trick mode, but can be in that trick choice specs, really shutting down some of the supporting options and forcing him to go for one particular move. Mm. I'm bundled as well with that Encore too. If it's in the right position, can encore again into a one sort of move, and that suddenly makes your own positioning so much easier. So you can just switch in something that resists that encore hit and then deal the damage back or just kind of protect around it to stall the rest of the trick room. And another big part of that is the Gothitelle itself has trick room itself too, so there can mm. always be the potential just to literally just reverse it round. So I'm th thinking we might see multiple trick rooms from both opponents in a lot of these games. That, I think that is likely going to be uh, a potential case, of course. Uh, I think you made a really good point there over what sort of anticipated uh, move the Golden Go can actually opt to go for. You've got the trick, you've got the full-on uh, huge damage output that you're capable of uh, being able to, to, to dispatch at any given moment so uh, there's a lot to take into consideration uh, whilst given the board state that's available at the time I think Golden Go can go for full damage has opted to go for trick room uh, for trick apologies from what we have been uh, informed about with their previous rematch do we think there is a case scenario for the King Gambit over on Alex's side it's a good question really um, because on Marcus's side, you don't actually have any kind of intimidate that's going to be able to proc the, the Defiant, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Golden Go has been something, though, that Marcus has been using to really great effect. It's not something that needs to set up like a lot of the other Golden Goes that we've been seeing throughout this tournament. Mm -hmm. It can literally go for that Make It Rain immediately, combined with the specs, combined with the Steel Terrestrialization, do huge damage. And as, as Marcus often said um, in the interview recently, it forces opponents to have to defensively terrestrialize their Pokemon a lot of the time. And especially in something like Hatterene, it could take so much damage from that, so it's going to have to terrestrialize into the fire. Mm. If you're doing that, and then you bring in Torkoal later, you can't terrestrialize into the fire type to help dish out more damage, which we saw was really key in Alex Soto's top eight match, um, where he used that eruption to really do a lot of damage to the King Gambit. Oh, and we are going to be getting the leads. Get ready, everybody. The action is here and nigh. Marcus is going to be leading with the Iron Judulus, having its speed heightened due to the booster energy activation of the item, uh, paired up with the Golden Go over 
on its uh, side. Whilst uh, we do have Alex leading with the good old uh, reminiscent lead back to the Sword and Shield days as well, the Hatteran and female Indeedy. But no Gigantamax option this time, Whoa, unfortunately. Thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, Snarl, it generally is a very nice lead into Indeedy plus whatever it's usually next to. So whether it's Indeedy Armour, it's Indeedy Hatterene. So I really like Marcus's Iron Jugulus lead here. It gives him the ability to really shut down or slow down the pace, even if Trick Room goes up here. Mm -hmm. Golden God's obviously still threatening that trick as he's done in his previous match with this Alex. So he's always got that option still, but a nice kind of safe option for him is also still that Make It Rain, which deals a lot of damage too. But we're actually gonna see it switch out here. So let's see if Alex is kind of more read into this. Oh, it's quite interesting because now you do have Trap available available on the field. Snarl coming out right now will be able to drop the special attack of both that Hatterin as well as the female. Indeed, Mystical Fire does go into that slot, so Marcus being able to identify that threat uh, does actually turn out to have a very good safe switch there being, of course, the Gothitelle, as we are going to be seeing the female Indeed does now set that trick room. An excellent switch in on the Gothitelle, to be honest, because now you can just keep snarling, keep dropping the offenses of both the special attackers. And with the Iron Jugulus able to potentially trasalize into the Steel type, you can take the Dazzling Gleams even better than that. Mm. So there's a, not a lot that Alex is get, can do now that he can't switch out either of these Pokemon. So it's kind of on Marcus now to see if he can stall it out just enough that he can position something as the trick room kind of expires to be able to make the most of the damage that he's kind of dealt through his snarls. Yes, I think that is a very good point there. It will just depend, right? Do you think that there's a scenario where we can actually expect the Tortle to try to position himself, come onto the field as immediate as possible? maybe in the subsequent turns, but for now, Female Indeedy does offer a helping hand to the Hatteran. Not quite enough to pick up the KO onto the Iron Jugulus due to that previous Snarl special attack drop. And talking about Snarl, we see it come into effect yet again. It does connect on both of Alex's Pokemon as the Gothitelle will now reverse the Trick Room and Iron Jugulus will be the fastest Pokemon on the field again. Exactly, it's resetting the board state right back to the beginning, but with a lot of a bigger difference of how much HP both of these Pokemon have. As we can see, Marcus hasn't decided to go for the steel type terrestrialization of his Iron Jugglers, so potentially saving it for something in the back, maybe that Golden Go, which will make the most of its steel type terror to deal out more damage right. as opposed to taking an extra hit from this Iron Jugglers, which kind of leaves Alex open to the option of actually mystical firing into it um, mm. as it terrestrializes it. So this is probably safer. Marcus knows the bulk on his own Iron Jugglers, so it knows he can take a lot of the hits that it needs to. So, and here comes a Protect from the Gothitelle. Protect from the Gothitelle, it makes a lot of sense. You want to just be able to uh, sort of add to its longevity as much as you can on the field. Snarl right now is just going to be doing some really good damage over time, but more importantly, dropping the damage output of both of Alex's Pokemon Dazzling Gleam will finally pick up the KO onto the Iron Jugulus, allowing Marcus to bring in a fresh Pokemon straight from the back as Trick Room has been now set yet again. Trick Room is up yet again, exactly. But Marcus still has the option of just re reversing it again. Um, there's no yeah. really offensive presence on Hat Hatterene and Didi's end here at the moment to really stop Gothitelle, mm. especially with that leftovers recovery, making sure it just sticks around us even that much longer too. And now that the Hatterene's kind of been hit by multiple snarls, the Golden Go, kind of thinking about switching in here, is still going to be able to take a Mystical Five rather well. Obviously, it is now in Trick Room, so it's going to have to take that first, and therefore it's going to take the special attack drop first. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a little bit more tricky. It's quite important as well to stress that the Snarl boost, or should I say, um, the debuffs over on Alex's side to the special attack due to the Snarls is going to prove to be quite crucial because, like you mentioned, the fact that Alex, sure, you've got Trick Room set up, nice but you don't have a lot of uh, damage output that can come out from your side of the field. So what are you going to do to try to change that up? You're either going to have to try to bring in your optimal Trick Room Sweeper in order to deal the necessary damage to uh, essentially get rid of the Gothitelle as well as the Iron Hands. But Iron Hands is a really nice Pokemon in this scenario, even if it, at the moment, is weak to both Fairy and Psychic. We do know Terrestrialization could be an option. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it was a very real threat, exactly. Um, Marcus is, does have his Iron Hands coming in here, so the Fake Out is not yet an option until the Psychic Terrain now does go down. And if a Marcus is able to get rid of this Indeedee before it's he's got the tail can switch out. Mm -hmm. The psychic terrain could be completely off the field. Mm -hmm. And that would be big if he's able to keep switching in and out of his this his Hariyama to which enables him to have another tool to slow down and tool out any more trickings that Alex attempts to set up. Redirection comes out from the female indeed and pardon my uh, chuckles there as there was minimal damage dealt from that Hatterin. Of course we know that Hatterin normally does boast a good amount of damage it can deal especially when escorted with that life orb item but more crucially the female indeedy is now out for the count as gothitelle yet again reverses the trick room yeah we i'm still waiting now to see when someone calls someone reversing the trick room <laughs> or setting up and then goes for the trick room that same turn to yeah. cancel out what they were trying to do <laughs> yeah we're still yet to see that and it's probably something that isn't necessary to risk yet from Alex or Marcus in this game one, but it's definitely a real possibility going forward into the future games. Now Alex now finally has a switch in that he can go for here, as now uh, Trick Room is, is kind of done, so, um, but Torkoal has the physical bulk as well as that offense to be able to take mm. some of Iron Hands' very powerful attacks. And it's quite nice for Torkoal right now because uh, you're looking at a grass type <laughs> Iron Hand, so that that is something that most uh, notably the Torkoal will be very, very excited about as long as it does have its Trick Room set up. Like you said, there's a lot of bulk, uh, physical defensive bulk on this Torkoal. Hatterin would love to get a Trick Room set up, but at the current moment, it's not looking likely due to the speed tiering. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to really have to just see how this turn kind of turns out here. Gothitelle can just keep everything in as it is. And a key thing about the Torkoal and the rest of kind of Alex's team, there's hardly any protects going around. So yeah. there's not a lot of reboard positioning Alex can do. And that gets even further limited because the Gothitelle has trapped everything in. So for Marcus, it's often very safe for him to target the slot that he knows that he wants to hit. Exactly. As we're going to be seeing the ferocious fire terrestrialization type on the Tortol, it will have an oncoming sidekick uh, damage dealt onto it. We'll be dealing a bit of damage, of course, taking away any additional uh, damage that it can actually distribute via the eruption ability. Uh, move apologies. We see the KO has been taken down for the Hatterin right now by, whoa, by the Iron Hands. And what a KO focusing onto the Gothitelle. It makes a lot of sense. You want to be able to at least get rid of what was a nuisance. However, we're in the scenario where Marcus does have the Golden Go. And being able to have the Golden Go right now outside of Trick Room will potentially be a bit tricky for Alex. Exactly. And now, even though Gothitelle has now gone down, it's kind of done its job, right? Alex is down to two last Pokemon, so any sort of Shadow Tag is mm -hmm. kind of null and void off the field. And if anything, you want your most offensive Pokemon now on the field, which now Marcus has been able to get. Yeah. It's the Choice Specs, Golden Go, and that Iron Hands, which has a lot of physical attack as well. Now, Armor Rouge has kind of a middling kind of speed tier, mm -hmm. similar to Golden Go's. Um, so I don't know if this Armor Rouge is very slow or how slow... Marcus's Golden Go is, as it's on a Trick Room team, but as we do see, it definitely outspeeds the Armour Rouge, and that's a big one-hit KO. Whoa, of course that's to be expected. Alex did not have the option to terrestrialize the Armour Rouge into the Dark type and close combat, even though it has not been able to successfully pick up the KO onto the Tortoise. This is going to be very tough for the little Tortoise Pokemon to be able to come back from, even though, of course, it does pick up that KO onto the Golden Go with the Flamethrower in the Sun with Fire Terror as well as it being same type attack bonus. So many one hit KOs going left, right, and center, but it is Marcus who's able to KO this Talker with that huge close combat, bringing him one game away from taking this final. What a way to navigate 
uh, both around and in Trick Room from Marcus's side. I think uh, that's uh, such a testament to understanding the flowchart and the matchup. I, I think uh, with both of trainers, of course, will have experience due to their previous match uh, prior. However, it looks like Marcus has a really good understanding of just being able to muddle with the hard Trick Room strategies quite well. The Dothertel seems to be a very, very big nuisance for Alex, being able to just lock down his part Pokemon and sort of uh, control the temperament of the Trick Room conditions at play. Yeah, the Indeedy Hatterene there was just kind of absolutely stuck. Yes, Trick Room goes up and that's fine, but if you're not doing any damage into it, mm -hmm. then what's the point in a way? So I'd really like to see Alex kind of switch it up. Maybe the Annihilate is what we need to be seeing here because it is that Choice Scarf and with that final gambit and a pretty high HP stat, looking at Marcus's team, there's not a lot here that kind of has the same level of HP that Annihilate is able to get. So I can imagine that Final Gambit can like one hit, hit KO pretty much everything on Marcus's team, maybe bar the Goldengo because of its ghost typing. I, I think it's quite tough uh, to bring an Eye as well, from the other hand, because we've seen Marcus actually lead with Iron Jugulus, and we know from seeing in previous matches as well as this one that the uh, pro uh, booster energy does proc the uh, quarter drive, which subsequently does heighten the speed, which does mean there is a very good chance that it will still outspeed the Annihilate, even if the Annihilate does have choice stuff, which, of course, uh, does, as a conclusion, uh, lead to the air slash threat. And I think that is something that Alex is kind of forced to respect in that scenario. I think that's a great point. And even then, even does say Annihilate that, that does survive that yeah. hit. You're able to get maybe a Shadow Claw off, but it's, it's not a generally powerful move, and especially if you're kind of investing more in the HP, you're not going to be able to get a key KO on something like the Golden Go. So we actually do seeing the same leads here. Game two, finals of the Bokken Regional Championships. Let's see if Alex can turn this back around. Psychic Seed activating on that Indeedy. Special Defense boost is coming up here. Now Marcus obviously still threatens that Snarl, plus the potential switch to Gothitel uh, once again. Um, but as we've seen from or heard from about previous games, the trick is a very real possibility for this Golden Go. And for any of you keen-eyed viewers out there, <laughs> may have seen Marcus kind of click that button. But obviously, as we've seen, Alex has taken some games by just completely switching out that Ndidi turn one, mm -hmm. kind of catching opponents off guard and going straight yeah. for that trick room with Hatterene, whilst getting in the offensive sweeper that he really wants to use, i.e. that Torkoal. So if something like that happens at the moment here, and catching that trick from the Golden Go, then suddenly Torkoal's going to be even boosted even higher. Oh, and we are going to see the Iron Jugulus has switched out as opposed to what happened in turn one of game one. We do see the trick uh, coming out into play here of course targeting that female Indeedy, which now does have the choice specs option. Dazzling Gleam from the Hatterene, of course a bit of recoil da damage done as well as chip but we have the scenario we were talking about. The Trick Room has been set up from this female Indeedy, which has a choice specs that was tricked prior to it using Trick Room, which now in combination with that Shadow Tag of the Dothertel, which did now come onto the field, it is locked into that move. Yep, yeah, locked into the move, locked into this situation, locked into this final. <laughs> Marcus must be feeling pretty good at the moment. Obviously, there's no snarl that's kind of reduced the damage output of this Hatterene, so Hatterene can still um, have a lot of offensive power behind it, especially with Mystical Fire into the Golden Go yep. or into the Gothitelle to reduce some damage. So. Alex is definitely not out of this yet, but he's almost like playing a Dondozo at the moment now, where the DD's kind of absolutely doing nothing here, and if anything, it's going to make the Hatterene slower next go. Gothitelle going for the Protect does want to keep the Shadow Tag on the field, locking down Alex's Pokemon. Dazzling Gleam uh, actually being dispatched from this Hatterene. Not quite enough to deal good damage onto this Golden Go, which does, of course, Pick up the KO with the Shadow Ball. Does make a lot of sense. There's a lot of uh, damage output coming out from the Golden Go uh, naturally. But Trick Room has now just been reversed from <laughs> Female Indeedy itself. Yep, yeah, and there it is. Um, but following turn, Alex can set it up again. And because we know um, the the Golden Goat has now lost its choice specs now, it can still switch up its moves. Yeah. So the question is though, it has lost a little bit of its power now. Can it make it rain and a Psychic, for instance, deal enough damage to actually KO the Indeedee before the, the Trick Room goes up again? 
However, because we know it's still Encore locked, Marcus knows that he can actually just reverse the Trick Room in the same turn with his own Garfatel next turn. Mm. So it's, and it's not something that he needs to kind of predict either. He knows it's going to happen, which shows like the power of this team where Marcus just limits how much his opponents can do, whether it's the moves, the switches, that makes his decision so much easier to click. Indeed, as we are going to be seeing the Armour Rouge now on the field. Once again, Alex does have uh, Trick Room uh, availability on a second Pokemon uh, right now with the Armourish coming on the field. However, we do know that this Gothitel, uh, whilst having the choice specs locked onto the female Ndidi, that's a bit of a nuisance. So Armourish really needs to try to help out its partner and try to dispatch of the Gothitel as quickly as possible, if I'm completely honest, because this uh, Golden Go uh, has a very good chance to actually snowball through Alex's hopes of being able to take this to a Game 3. Now, the Trastalization is still a possibility here, which we are seeing. And the Armourish does have that Dark-type Trastalization, which we are seeing it do now. Ooh. So if a Shadow Ball has been going through onto that from Marcus, it's going to be taking that very well. Obviously, we have seen Marcus go for the Power Gem already, but still, it's still going to take that a lot better this time. Ooh, Power Gem trying to get a super effective uh, damage dealt onto it, maybe in anticipation of this terrestrialization is not going to be able to deal much, but I'll tell you what uh, is going to be able to do that. The Armor Cannon, which of course picks up the KO. Golden Go is now out for this game too, as we have the female Ndidi once again setting up the Trick Room. It is going to be felled by Gothitelle instead. So it's that interaction you're talking about, having the Trick Room instantly neutralized. This is probably the most tricky game I've ever seen, to be honest, as Alex is kind of really stuck in here and we've had si literally seen it clicked so many times. Trick Room is now gone, obviously, and Armroot is now the Dark Type, having taken um, a little bit of damage. So Iron Juglis coming in here is a, an excellent pick because Armor Cannon obviously is going to do a lot of damage, but it's, Iron Juglis has some decent stats. It can take the hit of whatever it needs to be and dish out much more damage itself. You've only got special attackers here, so Snarl again is looking really strong and there's no kind of offensive pressure really into Gothitelle at the moment, especially after a few Snarls and some Protect kind of stalling to kind of heal Gothitelle back up with leftovers. Marcus really has everything in the driver's seat right now and it's got all, of it, all thanks to these kind of more unique Pokemon in the Gothitelle within the trap and this futuristic Hydreigon here which now sends off yet another Snarl. As Snarl is going to be landing on both of these Pokemon. Special attack drops, of course, on both Armourish as well as Alex's female Indeedy. We're going to be seeing the Trick Room yet again set up, only for it to be reversed instantaneously. Uh, we've got a bit of a uh, tricky Vortex in play as oh. the third Trick Room has been set up there. So Alex really putting out all of the stops right now. He needs to force himself back into this game. Love that play for Alex there. The triple Trick Room. I, think, I don't think I've ever said that or <laughs> think I would have ever said that myself. Um, so Amrusha has now put itself in a position where it's going to be able to get a lot of attacks off first this time. The question is, is it strong enough to do just that? We know this Armourish has the Twisted Spoon here, but it's not going to become into much effect with Expanding Force because you don't really want to be doing this here, right. as, as opposed to something like the Life Orb, which a lot of Armourishes have. So again, it depends on the bulk of this Iron Jugulus here, which is probably a lot, quite speedy, but seems to be more on the bulky side based on the supportive things it has. Here's the Armour Cannon. Is it going to be enough? It is targeting down the Iron Jugulus, but of course the previous turn snarls will come into effect. We didn't see any uh, sort of additional move from the female Ndidi, Ooh. as of course it's still locked into Trick Room. Iron Jugulus is going to be able to pick up the KO onto Armour Rouge, now forcing Alex to not only reverse his own Trick Room, he tried so hard with that triple Trick Room uh, sort of interaction the previous turn to set up, is now forced to bring in his final fourth Pokemon as the Psych Terrain is no longer on the field. Yeah, I think if you're Alex, you've got to be really hoping it. Yeah, it's something like that Torkoal here. Uh, it's 
It's bulky. It's got a lot of firepower behind it. Quite literally. So, it, literally, <laughs> exactly. Um, but the trustalization has already happened. So it's it's got its raw eruptions with that charcoal boost, which is the main thing it has here. But obviously, with Trick Room now expired, that snarl and that damage is going to be so key to kind of happen before Torkoal moves. As the snarl does connect yet again, not a single miss. Of course, it has a potential of doing so. Psychic now drawing into the Torkoal. Just, this is just so, so tough for Alex as Eruption is just not going to cut it. It's not going to deal the sort of damage that you would really want if you are uh, looking from this from Alex's point of view. And Iron Jugulus is just proving to be s too much of a menace in this matchup. <laughs> it's certainly been a complete game changer for many teams that Marcus has kind of walked on through all over this competition. There is a double up. It's the Psychic into the Torkoal as well. That's enough to kind of KO here. Marcus is getting... There's the handshake. He's so close now. He knows he's got it. It's going to be Marcus Statter of Germany who's most likely going to take <laughs> this. And did he flinches after everything from this Air Slash 2? And it's going to be probably that one more turn to go, to be honest, until he really clinches it out. Poor little female indeed. He just <laughs> left on its own there. Of course, we saw the confirmation uh, that Marcus Statter is now your 2023 Pokemon Bochum Regional Champion. excellently played by Marcus to be honest like so choreographed there was kind of just no sweat coming off he knew exactly what he was doing to really take that game and what a way to do it as well he has the home crowd right behind him he's he's, he's got the home county as well and this is also where Marcus Stadter also won the German nationals those few years ago as well in the exact same venue so he's really brought it home to the Ruhr Congress here mm -hmm. in Bochum quite poetic one would say and I think being able to watch Marcus and Bart of course uh, uh, on this journey of the tournament throughout we've just been able to just just look a bit into the mindset of what it really takes to be able to just come out on top be able to fight your way through all of these amazing players that have been able to just give it their all essentially I think uh, like we mentioned a couple of times already the bar was really set high during this region we had all of the best talents uh, from all parts of Europe be able to just all come together and try to make sure they could get the best that they can of course CP chasing is always really really good but Everyone wants that title. Everyone's hungry for it. But it just turns out that German national Marke Statter was even, it was the hungriest, essentially, if that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and that's probably poetic with his iron jugulus as well, <laughs> uh, uh, which he's so expertly piloted. I wonder if we're now going to see, you know, Costa, a little bit of a change to the meta game this time. Mm. Maybe. Uh, a little bit less Torkoal, uh, maybe a little bit more respect to what Iron Jugglist can do in that dark flying and with the support it can kind of offer as opposed to something like the Roaring Moon, which yeah. most players have just gone straight towards here. Mm, they have naturally gravitated towards it, but I think we also covered in a couple of interviews as well with Marcus that uh, he wasn't the only person that was bringing this team. I think there was mention of Wolf, which had, of course, reached day two of the Knoxville Regional Championships over on the other side of the pond and as well as Barish I believe uh, from uh, yesterday's tournament run as well so uh, being able to have that sort of core circle of friends and actually work together for the best sort of result and sort of have a couple of tweaks and understandings of what to better work what is a really cool niche meta pick oh wait no one's gone for Iron Jugulus let's give it a shot because it's got fast snarl and tailwind to take into consideration it's so paid off for Marcus as well like I'm, like, I'm generally so just happy for him like he, he's, he's just done so well he's yeah. like so well known by the German community as well he gives us so much back too so he has now won that 200 championship points so pretty much almost a world's invite there as well it, even if he doesn't have any others as well and that three thousand dollars I know and I mean what a way to do it as well against Alex Soto which commiserations but uh Alex is one of the strongest players out there during this season. Uh, and I feel like in this circumstance, we had him bring the same team, which he's so well versed with. Uh, and uh, it just doesn't have Paradox Pokemon. That's not 
necessarily a bad thing as Alex has just gone ahead and proved to everybody as long as you have a very poor foundation, you're going to be able to do great things as long as you also have natural fluency in understanding flowcharts and every single matchup. Exactly. And you can see here, there's the bracket of how Marcus has got all the way to there. He had to defeat Michael Kelsch and all that trick room and another Dragonite as well, which we saw so much of. And then he kind of progressed a little bit further, had to defeat Aurelion as well with a lot of great task and that uh, opposing Goldengo. And we saw him give him a lot, a lot of kind of um, ag aggro from that Dragonite, which is able to extreme speed all around the speed control arc, Marcus, that was able to set up. But mm. took it to a game three and he was able to really kind of push through and give up so much offense from that Goldengo. And... But yeah, as you say, Costa, nothing to take away from Alex as well. It's for someone who's got Series 1 team completely with no Paradox Pokemon, he's mm -hmm. done absolutely incredibly. And just goes to show you, you don't need these kind of brand new shiny Pokemon to be able to do well. You just need to have a really good strategy and to be able to just pilot it really well with the favorites that you really want. Exactly that. And uh, fun fact as well, as we saw, Alex's Pokemon, the entire of his team, have no Protect. He has been able to just go ahead and prove, you know what, you don't need Protect. <laughs> All you need is a very solid strategy. As long as you're very fluent with it, it will be able to take you very far as it, does, as it has done for himself. Over on Marcus's side, a very quick couple of notes as well with some sort of set changes that we're not, we're not used to commonly seeing. Iron Bundle has no Hydro Pump. We did see the rise of Encore throughout the weekend. The Iron Hands does not actually have a Volt Switch. It has opted instead for close combat, parried on with the Drain Punch and Wild Charge. So a couple of very interesting sort of changes, very minor, but they can take you a very long way. Yeah, and it's going to make people think as to how to build going forward for our future events, uh, particularly here in Europe, the Utrecht event as well, which is going to be Series uh, 2 still as well. So you've got a lot of potential change here. One thing that has been very common is a load of Torkoal going in here and absolutely no Pelipper going around, apart from um, yesterday when we had our own uh, Jack who used it to a pretty good effect. So maybe we'll see Pelipper coming back again. Who knows? Mm. And because it, it obviously pretty much goes pretty hard into Torkoal itself. Yeah. So and it was good, it would really deter Alex from bringing his if there was a Pelipper going around it too. And Wide Guard particularly as well. So many spread moves going around. Mm. Snarl too. Mm -hmm. Pelipper offers a lot of that. So I'd yeah. like to see the rain come back again and not just from a golden go. I agree. But I think there's a, a, a new bird in town which uh, hasn't been hailed. That Iron Jugulus being able to just uh, go ahead and absolutely transform uh, certain matchups in the way that it has paired with the Great Tusk. We were used to over uh, the past couple of weeks and events. We're used to seeing the Talon Flame and Great Tusk combination. You know, you've got the uh, double ground coverage, headlong rush, and the earthquake naturally, close combat and protect, focus ash, or life orb, Great Tusk paired up with a partner Pokemon, which is flying, so you can just go ahead and deal out that very crucial spread damage that we've covered a couple of times with how important it could be in certain matchups, even against certain types of Trick Room matchups. But uh, as we saw, Marcus didn't actually need that at all during this set. He was just able to get that really cool uh, lock of the Gothitel with Shadow Tag in combination with the Trick, which is honestly something we just haven't seen that much. Exactly. And the Golden Go as well is something I really want to touch on. Because I think every other Golden Go on stream has been like, nasty plot, make it rain, Shadow Ball protect, and always that water terrestrialization that we've been often yep. seeing. Yep, yep. So having this completely different switch up, or rather, if you kind of go back to Series 1, it's not completely unheard of, really. Mm. It was often kind of combined with that Murkrow with the ability to Tailwind and then go for it, make it rain instantly with the translation Steel type, prying yep. on so much offensive pressure turn one. Yep. However, then you were able to go to for, for a haze the following turn, mm -hmm. or in the subsequent turns, mm -hmm. to reset the special attack drops from your make it rain, yep. which we saw lots of in series one. And, so, and then you had to have an answer for that sort of thing mm. if you were going to bring any sort of team to an event then. So in a way, Mongus has just brought that back, but with a kind of new brand shiny tool in our Iron Jugglers here, mm. which has able to be do a similar thing, set up that Tailwind with a very high amount of speed, but also control the board a little bit with that Snarl and the flying coverage, mm. which it, a lot of Pokemon can only dream of by Trasalizing into it. But yeah. Iron Jugglers has it from the start, so he can always afford to use the Trasalization elsewhere and often on that Golden Go for just a 
huge amount of offense. And we haven't even, something that I just realized as well, David, is the fact that we haven't actually seen a lot of Dondozo Tatsudiris being able to make it through to the mm. final stages of the tournament. Is that something that may have just gone out of trend or is it just coincidental? Yeah, we always keep seeing them occasionally in, in, our, in the top cuts and they, they, get, they kind of almost get there and they don't get a lot of like mention because they haven't actually won the events necessarily mm. recently. But yeah, we have really not seen many of those anymore. And I think that's because as the meta kind of has developed on recently in recent weeks, people have realized that the Palafin option of Wave Crash, yep. Jet Punch, Haze Protect yep. with the Water Acidization is seems to just be enough of a matchup to kind of deal with Dondozo. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of players have that. Amongst all those Parallax Pokemon and Amoongus and things, it, we've, there's always been that Palafin often just kind of stuck there with that haze. Yeah. Because it is a nice option into Dondozo a lot of the time. And combined with like some of the Torkoal teams as well, it's even more of a poorer matchup. Mm -hmm. Especially if you can get your Torkoal in a position where it's, say, in Trick Room, and you can go for something like a Clear Smog, which we know is on Alex Soto's team. Mm. And I think that is something to honestly take a lot of consideration into going into the future events. Of course, Knoxville is still ongoing currently, so there's going to be a lot of meta changes and a whole meta state going on in that tournament. I'm very curious to see what the usage stats as well as the final results will be over in Knoxville. But of course, we've got Bochum. We've been able to see Marcus Schlatter go ahead and make history and get an additional regional championship under his belt, of course, and in what fashion as well. So it has been an absolute pleasure to be able to watch all of these trainers' journeys throughout the weekend. I think there's been a lot of high stakes uh, plays that have been um, uh, sort of displayed onto the stream currently and we've been able to have the pleasure to absolutely see them and enjoy because being able to battle at this high uh, high of level um, gameplay and competitive play is honestly such a great sort of um, motivator to be able to go into future events and drive more people with passion and interest and curiosity because everyone always looks up to see what teams work what teams win how can i do that how can i team build in that sort of fashion as well so uh, being able to see uh, someone such as marcus uh, come up on top as well is a is a great pedigree of uh, respect and appreciation towards the community too because in the end of the day uh, you look up and you try to do the best of which the best do that was beautiful costa <laughs> <laughs> I, I prepared the speech sorry <laughs> <laughs> i mean like that's absolutely right you you know like you've got a lot of teams that have been quite similar over the course of this weekend but as they've it's all been whittled down it's been the really unique teams that have kind of really sailed right to that top mm. alex sotter's team aurelion's team or, and obviously Marcus's team. So if you're kind of out there and you're thinking about all of those Pokemon mm -hmm. that uh, you, you feel like you should be using, look at a team that's like Marcus's that has just won this and no one yeah. else has kind of seen it coming. Like yeah. your team that you've got like kind of in your head at the moment, mm -hmm. in your game, why not give it a go? Just because it's not like everybody else's. Exactly, and I it think now more than ever, accessibility is widespread. We've got rental teams, we've got a lot of resource of, uh, resources available. But of course, we are here, the time is nigh. We are gonna be going ahead, cutting straight to the awards ceremony with your champion and finalists in a short moment. Hello, trainers and time to the 2023 Bochum Pokemon Regional Championships. My name is Ben Kiriakou and it's been an absolute privilege to be watching us go through this prestigious event, the first regional championships in the Series 2 format to be able to crown our championships. And what a way to do it with such an exciting finals between Marcus Statter and Alex Soto. We're going to be seeing both of these players here uh, joining us on the stage for a quick word before we round out this tournament. So without further ado, everybody at home and in the audience here, give it up for your runner-up of the Bochum Regional Championships, Alex Soto.
Alex, you've had such a great tournament so far, and uh, after watching you get second place at the Liverpool Regional Championships, I'm sure everybody at home was rooting for you to finally make that last, last game into a win, but unfortunately not the case. Even so, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling that I'm cursed, but <laughs> my opponent played me so good. I, fish I fished him in the tournament, and Marcus destroys me. He's so prepared for this tournament, and, and I had nothing to do, but I'm feeling great. I'm feeling so happy to do a second position again, but I, in the next tournament, I will try to win the regional. We'll see if you can make it again. I'm sure you'll have a lot of fantastic tournament performances this year. Congratulations once again. Enjoy your medal and enjoy uh, carrying on playing Pokemon. And I'm sure we'll see you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Alex. But of course, there is only one winner of any tournament, and that is your champion of the Bochum Regional Championships. Give it up for Marcus Statter! <laughs> now, Marcus, you and I have been playing for long enough to know that quite a while ago, in fact, nine years ago, you won the German National Championships right here in this very venue. How does it feel winning here yet again? Yeah, I'm honestly overwhelmed a bit. Um, it's been a while since last time. Had a big win. <laughs> Feels good to be back on top. You played so, so well and uh, the performance in what looked to be quite a, a dedicated trick room uh, team is so difficult to be able to navigate but you played it so so well one thing that I'd really like to talk a little bit about for the viewers at home is that iron jugulus of course uh, that I don't think anyone expected to see at this stage of the tournament so if you wouldn't mind tell us a little bit about that choice yeah sure um, I mentioned it before in an interview so I don't think it's any secret so a wolf uh, came up with this a wolf click of course and um, yeah he's Having a, an event also on this weekend um, in the US, a regional that is also currently going on. And it's not very often that we have the chance to uh, play on the same weekend. So we thought, hey, why not Yeah, work together? And um, Iron Dragalus is something that he suggested because uh, with, with Snarl and Tailwind, it has a good supporting option, but a little bit superior typing over Roaring Moon. So you don't have to Terra that often, but you can if you need to. Um, and then, yeah, with a natural flying typing, you can Earthquake with a great task next to it. So it's pretty nice synergy. And then also um, having a faster Snarl than Fluttermane and Iron Bundle. So that's pretty much, uh, yeah, why we decided to run it for this weekend. And it's clearly worked so, so well for you. Before we close out the show, do you want to give anyone a particular shout out, friends other than Wolf, of course, uh, that you've been uh, working with for many, many years now? Um, yeah, give us a shout out to people that have helped you along the way. Yeah, of course, uh, first of all to Wolf, uh, we were joking about getting this double win this weekend. Well, I did my part, so I <laughs> um, hope he can yeah, repeat the feat. I think it's looking good over there. And um, then, of course, yeah, all my friends, um, Barish, Faiz, Fevzi, who I've worked with here at the event. Uh, don't want to forget anyone. Uh, Yuki, of course, helping me through the Swiss rounds um, and through the top card matches today. My girlfriend, family, friends, everyone watching. Thank you so much for the support. And um, yeah. I don't know what else to say. Then we'll close it out here. Thank you very much, Marcus, and congratulations once again. We're going to be closing the show here, but one last round of applause for your champion, Marcus Stadter.